I kept going back to Hawaii in my dreams. That was no surprise since I was already an old Hawaiian hand when I was just a kid because my folks and I started going there back in the late 50s. The city of Honolulu itself, a fair haven indeed as your mainliner Stratocruiser settles down for a graceful landing. And my mom's parents were doing it already in the 30s, so it was the go-to paradise for the family forever. But life decreed we would stay mainlanders, and I lived in California like my folks, got a job with Fireman's Fund Insurance in San Francisco. You're looking at one of the best known insurance signs, the fire hat of Fireman's Fund. But for the best deal, you should also know the sign of the man who sells our insurance. No wife, no kids. You'd think I would have had lots of money to travel with, but somehow I didn't. I got back to Hawaii a couple of times. I'm Ed Hogan, owner of Pleasant Hawaiian Holidays, where we make paradise affordable. But it only this scratched my itch a bit. A full week in Waikiki. Listening to music scratched the itch a little better, and I didn't have to leave the mainland. I bought records. Plus, I went to the movies, watched TV, caught some of the great Hawaiian acts. But life was no bed of roses. I was living in a trailer, mostly watching random stuff on TV. Marty Sherman and George from the Sawmill. Been looking for good quality wood furniture and can't find it at the other major... Hey, shiny garage. My rent is... An old East Mountain. My jail. See on this. My secret ambition was to make enough extra money to blow the joint. Move to the islands forever. I studied and studied. Can you even imagine what $200 billion looks like? George, go ahead and bring them in. Just stay seated in your seats. These guys do not have a great sense of humor. Think about the last time you played the slot machine. Did you ever take the time to read this board? You just walk up to a machine and start banging in the... the but I never even got a toehold. Not long before my retirement, a buddy of mine from work who knew I loved Hawaiian stuff gave me this record he'd picked up in the islands. A band that called itself Red Poha and his Serenaders. Well, this was some of the greatest stuff ever. It had all the energy that the quiet village guys didn't have. Putting them side by side, Arthur Lyman and all of them sounded like they were on tranquilizers. And then I did retire. My folks had recently passed away, left me a little money, and there was nothing to tie me to the mainland anymore. I could live in a trailer in Hawaii just as well, and Red Poha and his serenaders were still in the back of my mind. Now that I had the time, maybe I could find him, and he'd still be playing that fantastic old style. Honolulu was pretty much the same. More modern, sure, but even so. And there was still lots of good stuff happening. For a while, I took ukulele lessons, but frankly, I was crappy at it. Much better to be an appreciator. But no Red Poha and his serenaders. I scanned the entertainment listings, asked around. Nothing. He had vanished into thin air. I was really disappointed, needless to say, but thinking about looking for him had helped me get off the mainland, and that was a real shot in the arm. Eventually, I got sick and had to go into a nursing home. But there's good stuff happening there, too. In 
Even when I don't feel great, there's a smile on my face and a lay around my neck. As we say in the islands, aloha.